Welcome back. My name is Paul Fritz, and this is our fourth video in making my first video game in Unreal Engine. What I want to talk about today is where I'm at so far with using the assets from Infinity Blade Grasslands and Firelands. I also want to show you some additional assets that I imported to help kind of fill out the scene. And I also want to talk a little bit about adding material to some real simple geometry inside of the uh, game engine. So let's go ahead and get started. Right here is where I am right now. I'm working on filling out and making some garden beds, and I'll come back to that shortly. <clears throat> but um, I guess uh, this is actually one good spot to show you. Right here, this is just a simple wall that was inside the ruins of the plain section for grasslands. So if I just pull it out, all it is is just one wall. I've taken six of them, two on each side, and then on the side itself, just one each, and place them together to make it look like a planter garden. I've also done the same thing over here for these planters that are going to hold the trees. This is just a half or a quarter circle, rather. And if you put them together, obviously, four of them make a circle. And what I've done is I have filled that out inside the entire area of this courtyard. So um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that. This castle down here, it uh, is just pretty much a Hollywood movie prop. All it is is just I've taken some of the individual wall pieces and the, bu the buttresses and some of the towers and created this facade that looks like an actual castle from the front. Because remember, we're only going to build out for what the player sees. We could, you know, sit here and spend an extra two, three days building out an entire castle. But if it's not going to be seen on the inside or from the outside, there's not much point in putting all that detail into it. So we might as well just go ahead and just create a scene so that it looks like it's uh, a certain object, just like they did with Hollywood sets, or still do. And then create this kind of a castle appearance. Okay, so again, this is just a bunch of the different assets. Some of them I've rescaled. This is a, a column that I rescaled. It starts out about that size right there, maybe a little smaller. Rescaled some of these. The walls I did not rescale. I left those individual wall pieces alone. And the same with that piece there, that uh, little column. Added the fountains. Didn't really change that stuff. These are the floor tiles that we started off with. And these are the floor tiles I showed you during the last video. These I did not change either, but I did put them together. One thing you got to be uh, very careful is when you start putting things butted up together, make sure they don't overlap. Um, and if they do, it's okay, but you got to make sure you don't have that flicker that appears uh, right along the edge here. So if I end up pulling it together, there would be this flicker if they're right on top of each other. You can kind of see that right there. There's a little bit of a flicker that appears. We don't want that in our game. So ultimately for the outside, I built this large maze. And one of the things is once we start getting this many assets, being able to keep track of what is what piece of it. Um, over here in our outliner, we want to start kind of putting things together to tie it all up so that it's nice and neat. And that way when they're all tied together, for example, with I go ahead and pull these all together here. You can see that there's quite a few uh, parts that are inside this castle. And we can close all that up, make everything nice and neat. But over here, you see the little eyeballs. If something's in your way and you need it out of the way so you can kind of work, you can click on the little eyeball and get rid of it. Just like that. It's just that simple. And now it's uh, you can work around it as if it's not even there. The way to do this is if I go back to my planter over here, We can not do that. Click on the different pieces of the planter or the objects that you want to put into a folder, a master folder. So I can select all these different pieces, including the shrubbery. And you can see that they're just kind of all over the place here in my outliner. 
But once I have them selected, and you can either select them the way I just did, or if you know what they are, over here in the outliner. And then right here in the upper right hand corner next to the magnifying glass, there's this little plus folder. Click on that. And now we can give it a name. And this is actually my fourth, fifth garden. So I'm going to call that garden five. And now I have everything up inside there. If I hit the little eye, it all will disappear. So that if I need to work around it with the floor, change some things out, I can just hide it and then come back and work with it. Inside of this large area here, I've also built an additional maze. And if I hide the mountain and look at it from the top, you can see there's the roofing area that I created from the floor tiles. And I'm going to back out a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find my floor there and I'm going to hide that. Wrong floor. It's actually called ceiling. Let's see, let me find that real quick. Here's the cave. So the cave roof is what it is. So I'm going to hide that. Now you can see that basically it's an additional maze piece to the larger courtyard maze. And I have this large volume area inside of here that I'll be able to fill out with some details, put in torches, which we'll get to in hopefully the next video. Go ahead and put all that back in. Now, one thing about these mountain rocks, you got to remember not all of the objects that were provided in these kits have uh, sides, uh, are, are four-sided, you know, they may only have one or two sides, three sides, depending on what the object was uh, meant to be and where it was seen from. So when you start to use those, make sure you're very careful at uh, using those and putting them so that they can't be seen, just like last time when I talked about with light passing through them or they might be seen by the player from a certain angle. So you make sure that you don't want to do that. Now, one thing I want to talk about real quick is how I made the dirt. What I did was, first off, I took a just a cube for those uh, rectangular ones and created a rectangle. For these, I'm going to demo this with a cylinder. So I'm going to grab a cylinder from over here in my modes, in, the, in this uh, mode right here for place, I'm going to grab a cylinder, pull that out into the scene, kind of set it there in the middle, and then I'm going to reshape it so that it fills the inside of my garden area. And again, I'm just going to uh, use R on my keyboard, kind of work it out like this a little bit. You can also grab these side ones right here. In fact, I'm going to do that instead of stretching like I did. So I can grab that little side section and kind of stretch it out without also growing the top out. And it's no big deal. We can always push that down. Go ahead and get this kind of the way we want it. Fill up this entire cavity here. And that ought to be good for right now. We can straighten it up better later. Push all the way down. All right, so there's the beginnings of the dirt. What's gonna go in here are uh, some of the trees. What I did was I downloaded that um, popular forest for the free one that is available inside the marketplace so that I had these different shrubs and trees to use. And that's what I'm beginning to fill that out with. But for the dirt, what I'm using is I went to Quixel Bridge. And if you watch my video on how to uh, link up Quixel uh, Mega Scans with Unreal Engine, the bridge is one of the things that you will get. So when you sign in with your Epic uh, Epic Games username and password, you'll be able to get into Quixel. And then what I did is I found a ground piece here that um, kind of looked like it was a garden. This dried, dried grass on moss. Uh, let's see what that looks like. I think that would uh, work pretty good for my tree. So I have a little bit of tree branches in it. So it looks like maybe some of the branches are falling off the tree. So once I have that selected, I'm going to click on download. And it takes just a minute to download. And move this up out of the way. Okay, so if this takes just a little bit longer, I'm going to go ahead and pause until it's done downloading so we're not wasting my time and yours. 
Okay, so now it has downloaded. And what I want to do is you notice that there's a re-download button and an export down here. But what we want to make sure is we want to check our export settings and what we want to export it as. I'm going to export this as a 2K. Make sure it's going to my Unreal Engine. Make sure you've already set this up. You can watch my video on how to set up your export to your engine, the installation folder for your engine. But right here, project location, you want to click here and make sure that it is going into your project. So in this case, I want to make sure that it's going into my Unreal projects, this project, which is my video demo one, and then into my content folder. If you look at my content folder, you see all the other things that have been downloaded. There's already the Infinity Blade, Grasslands, uh, Firelands. There's also the popular forest I told you that I downloaded. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, cancel that because that's already the folder I wanted to go into. And I'm going to click export. And it'll come up here. It'll tell me that it's exporting to my Unreal Engine and that it exported successfully. Now, if I go down here to my content folder, Okay, it tells me that it has, and it'll open that up right into that folder. And right here is where I have my um, surfaces. So if we go to content, you'll see there's a new folder in there probably that just got added called Mega Scans. There's surfaces, and there's my dry grass on moss. That was the one I'm using for that. The other garden bed, I use these small leaves since I have small plants in there. Go ahead and double click on that. And then with my um, cylinder that I had just created, selected, you'll see that over here in my uh, details window, so if I pull this up out of the way, details window, there is this one right here called materials. We want to take this instance. So an instance of a material allows you to make changes to that particular instance without affecting or changing your overall material. When we import this in from Quixel, it's already got a material instance. We could uh, dig around and find the actual material itself and make some changes to it, but we don't need to do that for this. We're just going to go ahead and grab that material, so the instance, bring it over here and see how it highlights green. Put your hand over the top of that and then drop it. And you'll see that it fills that in. Now, what an instance does is it allows us to go in and we have some minor things that we can change inside that instance. Maybe bring up a little bit more detail. See how we've got this three-dimensional appearance, like it's dirt with uh, sticks and things in it? So if I double click on this instance, it'll bring up this window. And right here is that material that we just applied to our scene. Now over here, let me move my head again. Over here in details, we see that we have our surface area. So this is our albedo, the uh, color. This is a normal map, and this is the roughness map that's been applied to this particular material. Down here, we have different things that we can adjust. The normal is what gives us that uh, bumped up appearance, so the three-dimensional appearance. I'm going to click on that, and right now it's set to default to one. If I hold my mouse over and click it to the right, I can drag this. And if you take a look at the, the ball there in the center, you can see that it starts to change. It gives me kind of more, uh, more definition. I really push it really far up there. And if I take a look at my model here while I'm playing with this. You may not see anything happen until I hit the apply button. So up here in the upper left hand corner of this, you see the little save button. I'm going to hit save. And there'll be a little bit of change here inside of our material. So that is how we can apply a quick and easy material to our um, to a simple basic object that's available here already to be able to add a little bit more detail to it. So if you wanted to put in some dirt or ground, depending on the shape of it, you could use any one of these shapes. You can even do this with a plane, drag the plane in, and then apply a material to it. And close that for right now. <clears throat> now, one other thing that I did do I wanted to talk about real quick was on these objects here, so on these archways, they were small and they were kind of narrow. I extended them so that they're wider, but when I do that, that kind of deforms the texture on the surface. It really stretches it out. Remember, that was one of the things I told you to be careful about because you don't really want it to look all stretched and deformed if you can avoid it. But I didn't really tell you how to fix it. What we can do is if with this particular object, again, 
here selected in our details. If I hover over this, you'll see that there is this tiled and it's called one tiled. Before the material is this, it's pillar one. I saved it, so I just like before in our last video, I double clicked on it, I saved it, and gave it a new name. I wanted to give it a name that I knew what it was, which is tiled. So by tiling it, and let me double click on it here, what that means is I went in and I made some changes here on the texture. The texture was this simple right here, it was this texture, this basic simple texture here, and the UV. And then here, I added a texture coordinate, so texture coordinate. So if I right click here and type in texture, texture coordinate will come up. You click on that, and basically, um, once you open it, it gives you the ability to kind of change some things with your, your texture. In this case, the tiling for the U and the V. If you don't know what U and V are, it's basically think of the uh, regular coordinates X, Y, and Z. And to keep from being confusing and that this that this is actually the surface area of your model, they refer to it in the U and V. There's also a W, but we're not working in the W direction typically. Typically, we're working in just a flat surface. So we usually only worry about the U and the V. And we can change this. This is usually defaulted to 1. So by coming in here, I'm going to go ahead and change this to a 1. I'm going to show you what it's doing here in the scene if I can work this out here. So watch my material here. When I change this back to one, this is what the default should look like. And then I'll hit apply up here. I'm going to rebuild that. It takes just a couple of seconds. And you can see that when I do that, now that material looks really stretched out in this direction. I didn't change it in the V direction, just the U direction, because I really stretched it wide this way. I didn't stretch it wide in the other direction. So in the V direction, I stretched it, or the, rather the U direction, I stretched it. So just keep in mind, play with these a little bit to find which ones, which direction, or you may have to change them both. But when I do that, what it does is now it doubles the number of tiling here, and it un, it's still stretched a little bit, but it's not as stretched as bad. And you can see that it kind of shortens down a little bit. It's not quite as bad. It does change some of the other parts of my texture, but that's okay. Um, it changed this direction, not the vertical direction. It changed the horizontal direction. Okay, you want to be clear on that. Okay, um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Thank you for uh, watching again. If you liked what I've shown you, please like my video. If, uh, if you really like it, please go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel. And uh, that'll let me know that I need to keep making this content and I will continue doing so. Again, thank you and have a great day.